Today, you are going to learn how to walk backwards. This is something that is extremely challenging for those of you that have had damage to your neurologic system that has caused your leg to either be stiff or have some kind of abnormal movement patterns. Picking that foot up, bending that knee, and stepping your foot backwards can be a challenging skill to relearn. So in this video, we're gonna go through a progression of exercises, really breaking down each segment of the leg and what needs to happen at each segment. And then of course, putting it all together with some full body drills that you can start working on today so that you can walk backwards more efficiently. But even more important than that, you can quickly take a step backwards if you happen to lose your balance backwards. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health to live an overall more active, more mobile, pain-free life. And all that said, as I mentioned, today we are going to learn how to take a proper step backwards without lifting your whole body up to move that leg backwards. So first and foremost, why can't someone step their foot backwards and why do some of you make it kind of this full body movement? Well, one reason is, is that you have an abnormal extensor synergy pattern. Some of you probably think I'm a broken record at this point, but it is extremely common. What an abnormal synergy, extensor synergy pattern is for those of you that are new, is that muscles link up abnormally together. So when you try and do a movement at one joint, there's other movements that, involuntary movements that happen at other joints because these muscles have just learned how to link up together. An extensor synergy pattern is when your hip extends or your leg moves backwards, the knee extends and the foot points. So if you can visualize stepping backwards in your head, this is a problem because when you step backwards, you need your hip to extend, but you need your knee to bend uh, in order to get that foot back. If you can't do that, when you go to extend and your knee wants to stay straight, that's when it kind of turns into this full body movement. That's one reason why a lot of people can't step backwards. So we're going to go through some exercises today and how to isolate hip extension, isolate knee flexion without having that full leg extension happening. And then for others of you, it's just that you have spasticity in your quads and your leg just wants to stay straight all the time. So we are going to go through some exercises today just to relearn how to kind of get that quad to relax, those muscles that straighten the knee out, how to get them to relax in standing. If you do have a lot of spasticity in your leg, usually it becomes a little bit worse when you stand up. So learning how to bend that knee or get those quads to relax in standing is also really important in order to be able to take a proper step backwards. And finally, I might throw in a couple of tools for those of you that if you just try everything and you just cannot get that foot backwards in standing, um, I will throw some tools in here that you can purchase that might help you to relearn this very critical motion. But all that said, let's go ahead and dive into the exercises. So the first series of exercises that we're going to go through is relearning how to extend the hip. So that means moving the leg backwards with the knee bent. Remember what I said, that extensor synergy pattern is probably the main culprit in why you can't step that leg backwards. When you go and try and extend your hip, your knee cannot bend. So the first exercise is going to be hip extension with the knee bent, which Many of you have seen me do this exercise before, but it's super, super important. You're just going to try and do a bridge. Now, in previous videos, I've um, told you to put something under in front of your feet so that they don't slide out. For this one, you really do want to learn how to use your hamstrings to kind of keep those knees bent instead of blocking them. If you're always blocking your knees from straightening out, then that's not going to carry over very well into standing. So you want to learn how to kind of push down through your heels and not let those feet shoot out or not slide up. 
So there's two ways, there's two problems that do usually occur if you have an extensor synergy pattern is the foot's either going to shoot out or your knees are going to straighten and you're going to shoot up. So you want to keep your heels and your shoulders or your bottom relatively close to each other and just extend those hips without those knees straightening out. Now, once you get good at that, the next one would be to go to a single leg and try and do that same thing. So again, you're trying to extend that hip without that knee shooting out or without that leg straightening out and down. And again, just extending that hip, knee is staying flexed, working on that hip extension. And then once you can do those, roll over onto your stomach and do that hip extension without letting that knee straighten out. It's a very similar motion to when you're actually taking that step backwards. So that was working on hip extension motion with the knee staying flexed. We also want to work on knee flexion with the hip extended. And I do recommend, the, these exercises look kind of similar. Some of them are gonna look kind of similar, but I do recommend you work on both hip extension with the knee staying flexed and knee flexion with the hip extended. So first one we're gonna do is with the leg dropped down, hip is extended because it's straight. And then you're just gonna try and dig your heel in and pull your foot back. So you're gonna dig it in and pull it back, dig it in and pull it back, dig it in and pull it back. And then once you get good at that, again, we're gonna flip over and you wanna try and really get good at those hamstring curls. Again, this is keeping the hip extended straight this time and really working on that knee flexion motion. Now, this exercise is kind of a passive knee flexion with hip extension. We're going to be doing a step down, um, but this is for those of you that I mentioned where you just have a lot of extensor tone or spasticity in your quads where your leg always wants to stay straight. With a step down, what we're working on is just getting that quad to relax. And then for stepping backwards, because I've shown step downs in other videos as well, you want to hold it. The reason for that is, is one thing that I find is that people are very uncomfortable having that involved leg bent and behind you. So when you finish, you're kind of getting that active assisted knee flexion, and then you do want to hold it. And then if you can't step back up, just walk around the step to get back up on the step. And then again, this is the involved leg. You're gonna step down and just hold it. Get very comfortable having your involved leg behind you. Now, if you have an articulated AFO, you can do this with your articulated AFO on. It's a little bit harder to do with a solid AFO. Um, that said, stepping backwards in general is just harder to do with a solid AFO. So just something to keep in mind if your ankle AFO does not bend at the ankle joint, uh, something to go back to your physical therapist or talk to your physical therapist about to see if you're ready to have that brace articulated so that you can do some of these movements, in particular stepping backwards, because I do think it's so important. So one more time, you're going to step down and just hold that motion, hold that position. All right. So for this exercise, again, we're working that hip extension with the knee flex, and you're just going to do forward, backward stepping with your involved leg up on something. Uh, if you have a folding mat table, I love a folding mat table. Link for a folding mat table is in the description below. They're great. You can move them out of the way. It's the one that I use for most of the videos here on YouTube, um, but I highly recommend it. It does go low enough that you could do this if you're on the shorter side, but it also raises up high enough that you could do this if you're on the taller side as well. But again, we're just kind of doing like a forward backward step, getting used to having that, working that hip extension with the knee 
flexed. All right, and the handy skateboard, it is an exercise that I show a lot, and it's another example of using a skateboard to work on pushing that leg backwards, having it up on wheels allows the leg to relax a little bit more. The other reason why this is good is it forces your knee to already be in a slightly bent position, which once your knee is unlocked, sometimes it's easier to move that hip. So just the idea or the fact of having it up on this step will help. And then you're just going to push that leg backwards. And then of course, I always love tools. So if you go through all of those exercises and you've done the skateboard and you've done everything else and you still try and walk backwards and you cannot do it, um, I love this resistance band belt. So it's just a belt that goes around your waist, another cuff that goes around your ankle. And sometimes this will help to bend the knee just enough so that you can take that step backwards. And again, so again, it's just helping you just a little bit to unlock that knee. And in some cases, that will make it easier to try and take that step backwards. So link for this will be in the description below. As I've always said, and I've said in a lot of other videos, tools are not a bad thing. You want to set yourself up for success. So this is an excellent tool for relearning, setting yourself up for success so that you can relearn how to properly step your foot backwards. And then one final tool that I really like is uh, a shoe lift. This is actually for if you are someone that you're in like a walking cast boot. This goes on your other foot to kind of level you out. So I will put a link for this in the description below. It's not something you can walk in all the time because it's pretty flimsy. It just kind of straps onto your shoe, but it raises you up anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch. So if you put this on your uninvolved leg or underneath your uninvolved foot as a tool, what that does is it raises you up a little bit more and it gives you more space to step that foot backwards. So I'm a big fan of anything that lifts the other foot up for walking forwards or walking backwards as a tool. I'm not a big fan of heel lifts because I do think you need something under the entire bottom of your foot. So again, I do like this. It just kind of hooks right onto the bottom of your shoe and I'll put a link for that in the description below. But again, it makes that leg a little bit longer so it gives you a little bit more space. Sometimes that's just enough space that someone can relax enough to bring that leg through. And then there's one other thing that's super important is stretching your calves. So I've shown this in other videos, but really you have to have good flexibility in your ankles. If you don't, your foot stays pointed all the time. So getting on a wedge and just stretching that calf out, stretching that ankle out to make sure that you have the range. If your foot's pointed, it makes it near impossible to get that foot through. So just make sure that you're also doing your ankle stretches, especially if you're, um, if you have that extensor synergy fit pattern and your foot is pointed. The other thing that's important to know, and I've seen this a lot recently, is that some of you are in an AFO that is pointed. So that's a very common that orthotists and some even therapists recommend it, um, is to put a wedge underneath your AFO. The logic behind it in some cases is that it unlocks your knee, but it doesn't really unlock your knee. It just keeps your foot pointed all the time. It doesn't unlock your knee unless they also kind of put what we call plantar flexion stop on it. But you definitely can't just have your AFO pointed without what this thing that we call plantar flexion stop on the back of it to stop your foot from pointing if they did it to stop your knee from um, locking out or hyperextending. That is something I just saw recently. If they put a heel lift in, and your foot is allowed to point, all it does is make that leg longer versus if they put a heel lift in it and they block your ankle from pointing, there is some utility in that, but that's oftentimes not what I see. There's just a wedge underneath the heel, keeping the foot pointed, making the leg longer, which is gonna make it harder to get through 
get through to clear the ground. So just something to be aware of if you're in an AFO, if there's foam underneath your heel, then technically that leg is a little bit longer and it is gonna be harder for you to pull that leg through. So stretching your calf and trying some kind of a, um, a, a lift on the other shoe might help. And then that is it for this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did and you haven't yet subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you will get notified every time I upload new videos. I also want to remind you that we do have a monthly gold membership program where you will get access to all of my personal home exercises that I give to my patients that I see in person. With your monthly membership, you get access to the entire library as well as the most valuable part of your monthly membership are our monthly lives where you can get answers to your specific questions as well as you can join our Discord channel where we're just trying to build community and help all of you connect with each other. So if you're interested in that, check that out. Information on that is in the description below. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. <music>